Hi everyone, it's Cindy. Welcome back to Studio Lou. Please ignore my weird voice. I am recovering from some kind of a weird little head cold that I think was triggered by too much air conditioning while on vacation. Um, that happens to me from time to time and I get almost like a little bit of a laryngitis type thing. So anywho, um, I'm working on the fairy journals. Can you believe I've got almost all of them bound? Um, and I found out a new way that I wanted to bind these. I was going to add um, a spine on top of this, but then I realized like I kind of did things a little backwards when I was making the interiors. Um, I would typically have put this over the spine. Um, there's another way that you can put a spine right on top of this, no problem. Um, but what I was thinking is I really like the look of the um, binding on the outside, but I was kind of concerned about, you know, I didn't want to ruin the look of these spines. So I didn't want something that would just run, you know, like this. So, um, I've kind of come up with something a little bit different. I've been having a lot of fun with these. Um, I'll show one to you. Give me one minute. Sorry, I should have kept it here. <laughs> but anyways, you see what I mean? How, you know, I didn't want to have the whole entire cover uh, co or spine covered in strings. So I'm doing these mini bindings of three holes. Um, and I love them. They're kind of twiggy to kind of go along with like what's going on on the spine. So yeah, and the binding is really nice. Um, it sits really like invisibly. It's really quite nice. So anyways, that's what we're doing right now. Now this one is not as challenging because potentially it's more challenging because of where I've put the words here. So I have to think about like how I want to do that. Um, but first what I'm doing is I need to put these strings in. So this is waxed linen. And what I did was I measured it to be basically twice the length of the journal. And then I cut four of them here. Earlier on, I put an eyelet in here, punched an eyelet through the top of the spine. And these are going to be for the beaded spine dangles that are going on these journals. Um, so I just put sort of a loop through here and then I bring it through and just give it a nice tug upward. Don't, don't pull down cause you'll ruin your, your sharp spine there. I mean, unless you want it to have a little tuck at the top, that could actually be cute too. Then you also have the option to pull it down again. Um, and, and have the, like the crease of the spine in, in the eyelet hole. I'm going to keep this one at the top. I've been kind of switching back and forth. So then I just, I separate the sets of four strings and I, I pull them a little bit apart. Then I just tie a simple single knot there. And then we have like a nice knot there. So now this will be the dangle that we will bead afterward. Okay. So I do that before I do my binding. Um, I also should do my little vacation recap. So I've been away for the last week. We had a nice vacation in the woods. It was so restful and beautiful. I'm so happy that we went. Um, it was a lot of fun. Okay, so I think what I wanna do is, I wanna go below the words here. So I'm gonna go one, two, three oops hold on sorry i gotta erase that the other thing is these have been um sealed so these this marker will just wipe right off i've got two signatures so you know you'll just eyeball here we want one and two those are your two holes then two two three three so that's where the one set of bindings will go. And the other one I'm gonna do here, and I'm just gonna kind of compare like roughly where it is. It's pretty easy to do. One, two, three. Okay, so that's my, my holes for binding. Um, let me just set my butterfly aside here and anything else that might come falling out. I don't think anything else will. And then we're just going to punch holes through these. Okay. 
yeah so it was a really beautiful time um i love going to this place that we go we've been before and it's just be very beautiful out in the middle of the woods and um there's water and the whole area is just very nice so so i'm just i just washed off um the excess marker that was left behind there yeah so spend a lot of time with the kids with the family in general and we um had lots of time at a, a little beach that's nearby and that was great very quiet little beach and pop this back in here okay um now i need the signatures so i have two signatures i'm gonna take the back one first um then flip the book back over and now it's time to just kind of look through my signature and see if there's anything I want to do um, with it before I bind it. I don't think so. I think this one's fine. I already spaced the pages how I want them. Okay, and then just tuck, tuck, tuck. Give it a nice little squeeze and join and bring together, you know, nicely. Then I need clips. Just come up here and clip this. And hold the bottom here. Should have opened these before I got started, but you know. The woulda, coulda, shouldas of the world. That's me. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and hopefully you saw a couple of my little short videos that I shared. We went to a nice little um, barnyard farm petting zoo kind of place that's really lovely and it's run very, very nicely. Um, with mostly farm animals, just well, all farm animals like horses and goats and cows and zebus and all sorts of little animals like guinea pigs and um, lots of birds, ducks and geese and um, all sorts of like chickens and stuff. A lot of fun. Okay, so now this I have pulled to the length of twice the journal and I'll just set it aside with the needle in it there. Now I'm just going to take my journal and just keep my crease here in my signature and then lay the journal down here with the dots visible on the outside and just measure it exactly how I want to have these holes and find my marker. Actually, I should have prepared that first. Do it again here. Line it all up nicely. And we go one, two, three, one, two, three. So this is just like two mini three hole bindings. Not super difficult. I mean, it's a little more stitching, but you know, it's for these special cases where you want to still be able to stitch through the spine, but you don't want to ruin um, decoration that you've done on the spine. So I'm just using a paper piercer to go through this, these six holes. All right, and then I like to start with the bottom um, middle hole to bind, and also the, it's the signature that is second. There's two signatures in this journal, and it's the one at the back. So we'll start just by going in here, and this is the middle hole at the bottom. Open up the journal and go in here. Again, middle hole at the bottom. And we pull through and just leave about, you know, that much or so for now. Then I go to the lower hole here, underneath the one that I just did. I come back up. Then I'm gonna go through the top, making sure to go in that back set of holes, not the front one. Hold your end and then pull through. And then going back up through the middle hole again. 
be careful not to split your your binding thread it does get easier when you use a waxed linen though because it's not as splitty as say um, embroidery floss which can be you know more splitty because it has six individual threads that are a part of it when you use the whole piece and then I'm just going to cut that short now we're going to go to the top still working on the second signature so. and then I'm going to go in the middle hole again just like at the bottom and then I can look down here and I can see it's hard for me to lift the whole book but let me flip it now I can see see make sure you're coming out the back this is our side and here's a look at what we've done and then come out again then go bottom flip over again and I just kind of like separate and lift them so I can see where my hole in the paper is so I'm not gouging all over the place you do have a little bit of leeway, but you just need to kind of be careful because you don't want to um, destroy your pages. You don't want to like accidentally pierce them and too far out. Okay. And that's through, and then we're back through the middle again. Okay. Here we go. I don't usually tie signatures in on camera because I feel like the pressure often just kind of gets to me of <laughs> like it being perfect but I guess I'll just state that that one went perfectly it doesn't always last night I was working on binding um, oops binding another book um, and um, see how the end of that just snapped that's okay it's just the end but that can snap um, I just like to give the wax linen a nice tug um, it just makes everything neat and tidy don't go so hard though that you um you pucker the outside of your book or that you snap your thread you know you won't you don't want to snap it at the knot especially because then you have to start all over again so here we go see no puckering or anything just a neat couple little guys there now see we still have our holes here we've got this signature in and now we need to put in the front one so the process will be the same um, first I want to go through this um, there's some I want to put some staples in here just because this paper is a little um, different in texture and I want to make sure that it doesn't let go of that pocket the front side of that sparkly paper it's kind of um, I'm like no I don't think it will let go but I, I just do my best to try to make sure that like my journals don't you know shift around and what I like to do is because the washi tape is so pretty I just put it over the back of the staples like this it also just protects you know your fingers like they're not sharp they are laid down nicely but I also just think I love any opportunity to add a little bit of cute washi tape um, so that's what I'm doing. Then I need my scissors. Here they are. I just need to trim a little off the bottom. There we go. So that's done. And then we can put this back in the pocket it came out of here. And then I'm just going to kind of go through and take a look. See. Okay. All good. Nothing on this back one. So I don't need to worry about it. And then I just want to center this kind of glitzy paper in the middle all right so now we have the signature sort of situated and then I go into the middle which is around here somewhere here there it is I think this one yes okay and then I'm just gonna press press and grab a clip this is a really, really um, strong clip. It's very hard to open, actually. I think it's probably getting bent <laughs> and unhappy because it's been used too many times, probably. Okay, then this one on the bottom. And then just sometimes after you clip, you gotta check if things have shifted, make sure, and then you just clip it all down. Okay then grab the journal again in order to use it as a guide 
um, for where to put your holes. So just line up the top and the bottom, making sure that your papers are not going to stick out. Perfect. And then I just follow my my dots here that are on the outside of my journal. Okay. Set that aside for a moment while I poke holes. Yeah, we had such a nice experience with wildlife. We saw a mother deer and two baby deer and we saw um, so a lot of other deer um, but the, that was the highlight seeing the babies for sure and then um, we saw a raccoon on our porch and we gave him an apple because we're bad but it was just nice and we threw it off into the distance so that he could have an apple for dinner and um, you shouldn't do that FYI because it will attract raccoons to hang around and they'll become a little more tame and you don't want that which is why I sort of threw it off in the driveway when the raccoon wasn't looking so that we could later on kind of observe from a distance as he ate the apple in the driveway that was nice um, <laughs> but I think people probably either feed them there or like when they're staying in the cabin or the bird seat attracts them so I don't think I could have really impacted their behavior anyways, but there was only one raccoon um, and it was really nice to just get to see that sweet pea. Okay, holes are poked. Um, my husband had a slightly scary but quite hilarious situation um, when we were at the beach. We were just about to leave and all of a sudden he said, my lip feels funny. And I looked at him and he's like, I think I got a bug bite. I think a black fly bit me on the lip. And surely enough, oh my goodness, his lips swelled and swelled to comical proportions. I mean, I mean, it wasn't comical. I immediately hit the pharmacy and I went to um, get him some Benadryl and we got that into him real quick because um, the area that we're staying in, you know, of course, I hate to talk about the pandemic, I really do, but then again, I kind of don't because I feel like we've all gotten into this like weird forced silence on it or something. Like not forced silence, but it's almost like people just don't want to hear anything sensible anymore. They just, they do whatever they want, whatever, right? And you know me, if you've been watching me for long enough, um, I kind of guide all my life decisions by science if possible, um, by actual like, epidemiology opinions and so the sad thing is in the area that we were staying it was not too far from Perth Ontario and um, Perth Ontario has had chronic um, shortages in staffing anyhow with their hospital their ER and um, I mean it seems like it's a combination of some bad hospital administration and some bad government cutbacks and just a general burnout of nurses because of the pandemic um, and all the restrictions being lifted yet people are still getting hospitalized um, and now they've had an outbreak of COVID-19 among the nursing staff um, so they've had to close their ER which is utterly terrifying um, yeah so that being said, um, you know, thankfully we didn't need to be hospitalized with, with my husband's lip situation. He did certainly have a quite a severe allergic reaction, but we've dealt with these things before. We're, we're pretty um, well versed in dealing with health issues in general, but also um, allergies. So we knew this wouldn't require like an EpiPen or anything because it, it just, it stayed localized and there was no hint of breathing issue or anything like that. No glandular swelling, none of the kind of signs that you need to act fast with an EpiPen. Um, I recommend if you can, even if you don't have anyone in your family who has um, known issues, I still recommend you carry an EpiPen if you can afford one or you can get access to one because they are life-saving and people can develop um, allergies to bees and other things at any stage of life and uh, 
yeah, it, it happened to a good friend of mine and his wife actually saved his life because she carried an EpiPen, even though they didn't have any real reason, she just did. And so, yep, I think because she took first aid training and she had heard the same thing that I'm telling you, which is where I got it actually too, is in first aid training, um, that it's a good thing to have. So, anywho, um, it cleared up like the next morning was when really like late in the morning of the next day is when all the swelling subsided but he was good um in terms of like it, it started to go down within a couple hours of the benadryl being administered so <sighs> but it was quite funny he he my husband is a comedian um he is very funny and our kids were just like my my daughter especially was just <laughs> she was just like what is going on and I mean she was laughing about it thankfully the whole thing was you know something we could laugh at <laughs> it didn't go worse but um yeah black flies are evil they are definitely so annoying and um you know they hang around bodies of water because that's where they're they lay their larva so the annoying thing about them is that they like to kind of buzz around you, buzz around you, and they won't go away. You slap at them, you smack at them, and they just, they'll go for a second, and then they come right back, and often they do the same thing if they've bitten you. And you know, they're another one of those bugs where like, their mouth is like a little hypodermic needle, and it can carry infection. So, yeah, we um, need to be mindful of any risk of infection. So you clean it right away with soap and water, which is what we did. Because um, you would not want an infection inside something as sensitive as your lip. Because if ever you've hurt your lip in any way, you know it's a very sensitive place that it, it's very prone to swelling, right? So, ugh. But all was okay. And there we go. The second signature is in. Let me get these clips off. Okay, clip number two. Then, open this back up again. There, okay, so there we go. They're both in and all the pieces are put back together. Yes, all right, so that one is now bound. I have a few more things to do after, um, oh, here's a final look at the binding. See, how cute is that, right? Those little, little twiggy kind of bindings. I think that's so sweet and you'll see like, it's really well bound. Like it's not at risk for shifting. It's not wiggling. It's actually, I kind of like it better than a single binding. Um, I mean, which kind of makes sense because you're adding more um, binding sort of structure to the book instead of having it be dependent on only one binding. I kind of like this better and I feel like it might be something that I adopt into my process more. And you know, you could do even more, but like singular bindings usually even if they're you know five hole however many hole they're usually connected within one line right it's usually just one set of holes this however is two separate sets so it's like they're not connected in any way they're not dependent so you're not going to get any shifting of any kind so that can take away the need to feel like you have to pull so tightly to make sure that like your signatures aren't going to wiggle um i like that so i may keep this in my my uh way i'll show you a few things now um from vacation that I picked up so I didn't do a ton of shopping I just did a very little bit my intention was like enjoy your vacation don't shop but I did get a couple things I did go to one antique store and they do have books this one was two dollars it's the only book that I got I thought it was really cute Robins in the Garden Olive L Earl and it was an old library book now this store had a lot of um like vintage books um nothing outrageous but you wouldn't know that to see their prices because they are wow their prices were out, out i don't know how to explain it but um yeah so it's really cute i like the cover I, I think i'll use the cover for a journal to be honest it's really nice has a cute discard charlie wrote his name in here but it's all um nice big words and also just beautiful illustrations obviously lots of robins 
Yeah, they were selling like the average book that you would see at a thrift store for like 20 or $30. Look at that squirrel. I was like, what is going on? But you know, there's a lot of people who I think they get a little miseducated on the value of, of books. Um, we have a nice pocket in the back and that's great. So yeah, I did not spend any money on any of that. It's kind of cuckoo. Um, and then I actually dropped into the local dollar store and I restocked butterflies because I've used so many butterflies this little past little bit um, making all these fairy journals. I also found this, this lovely little netted embroidery of thistle. Look how pretty that is. It was two dollars and it's in its own little, you know, I mean for the um, for the hoop alone that's a great price but I will use that for something fun. And I got some cute napkins for, um, also from the dollar store. These ones have roses and little moths on them. And I found a little skein of Shibui yarn. So this is a beautiful, very luxurious yarn. And I just want to use it for a bit of stitching. Um, it was 50 cents. The original ball was $21.99. And the funny thing is, this I believe is almost an entire whole skein of um, Shibui silk cloud. It looks like a very little amount of yarn. Um, but Shibui is kid mohair and silk. This particular, they make all different kinds of yarn. This is just their silk cloud. And it's just beautiful. And be nice for stitching so I picked that up because it's a very um, luxurious lovely yarn had to grab it then I found a nice guest book um, I like this one because it's nice and big and it just has like guests at the top and nothing else and two lines of writing so that will go into coffee or tea dyed up and then um, this has been like languishing in one of my purses for a long time I've had it. It was on like a 50% off yellow tag day sale one day and I found this necklace and I want to break it up into things for journals because look how lovely those are. And I may use some of them in the fairy journals. These would be really nice little flourishes for the spines. So yeah, that is my haul, my little baby haul um, from vacation. But I just wanted to touch base with you to say hello because um, it's been you know a while since I've sat down in this room, like uh, seven days at least. Um, so yeah, I have a whole bunch of projects that will be coming your way soon. Um, I'm I, I will tell you a little bit about them in the next video. But for today, I'm just going to do a little more finishing with the fairy journals because I'm getting very close to getting them in an almost ready state. So if you like flip through videos, my channel is going to be full of them over the next couple of weeks, I think. So, yep, that's it for me for now. Um, I also have a really amazing... Um, collaboration coming up I'm gonna make a separate little video um, and yeah I'll tell you a little bit about that later so thanks for now bye